subunit 4 of unit 2. Uh, when hiring entry level internal auditing staff, which of the following will most likely predict the applicant's success as an internal auditor? Okay, I'm going to appoint a new internal auditor. What I would be looking for? A graded point average on a college accounting courses. He has been very good at accounting. That's not something that I will go by because accounting is a very small work of internal audit. Ability to fit well socially into a group. <coughs> okay, he's very social, but external internal audit are not expected to be so much socializing that they can disclose confidential information. What I would be looking for, ability to organize and express thought well. He's articulate, he can express himself well, he will be good at reporting and communication. That is something I admire and I will hire him. Level of detailed knowledge of the organization, mm -hmm, that could be a good thing, but do I expect this from an entry level auditing staff? Remember, it's an entry level. So we'll be doing the basic work first. So the first thing that I need from him is the good communication skill. Then he will learn more about the organ, the business. Next, a chief audit executive for a very small internal audit department has just received a request from management to perform an audit of an extremely complex area in which the chief audit executive and the department have no expertise. The nature of the audit engagement is within the scope of internal audit activities. Management has expressed a desire to have the engagement conducted in the very near future because the high level of risk involved. Which of the following responses by the chief audit executive would be in violation of the standards? One, discuss with management the possibility of outsourcing the audit of this complex area. Good, this is the right approach, no violation. Add an outside consultant to the audit staff to assist in the performance of the audit engagement. Good thing, right, perfect approach. D. Discuss the timeline of the audit engagement with the management to determine if sufficient time exists in which to develop a property expertise. Absolutely fine. By that time, we will gain experience. But accepting the audit engagement and beginning immediately the work that, and since it is high risk area, you do not have the skill for it. Should you do that? No. You do not have the competence to perform that work. So again, uh, not the right approach. Your organization has selected you to develop an internal audit activity. Your approach will most likely be to hire who? Internal auditors, each of whom possesses all the skills required to handle all engagement. That's not practically possible. Inexperienced personnel and train them the way the organization wants them to train. Why in experience? This is not an appropriate approach. Internal audit department should collectively contain the knowledge, skill, and competencies needed to perform the engagements. Incorrect. Degreed accountants, because most internal audit work is accounting related. No, I just agree, not accounting. Accounting, you people will study little bit in your part three. The rest, there is no accounting. D, internal auditors who collectively have the knowledge and skill needed to perform the responsibilities of an internal audit. That's what I will be criteria will be for the selection. Next question number four, the internal audit activity collectively must possess or obtain certain competencies. The internal audit staff should be competent in what? Not competent in marketing, not mentioned. General management principles, we just need to have the awareness. Finance, unless and until it is needed as the financial audit. Yes, the use of International Professional Practices Framework, IPPF. We have to be proficient in this. That's the main area we studied under proficiency. The internal audit activity collectively must possess or obtain certain competencies. Internal audit staff should be competent in what? In reverse order, evaluating marketing campaigns. There is no mentioning of this in the standards. Attribute standard. Determining whether personnel decisions reflect general management principles, again not mentioning regarded HR management skills. Applying tax laws to returns, no mentioning. But what is mentioned is the ex exercise of business acumen, business understanding. That has been expressly mentioned in the standard. So, so at some questions you will use your intuition, sometimes you will use the, the, the learning, sometimes you use just gut feeling. Internal auditing is unique in that its scope often encompasses all areas of an organization that is not possible for each internal auditor to possess detailed competencies in all areas. 
that might be subject to engagements. So in which of the following must the internal auditor act, internal auditor activity collectively be proficient? Which area with that we have to be proficient? Tax laws, no. We just have to have an appreciation of this. This is the third, fourth level. Finance, fourth level. Commercial law, fourth level. Emerging issues that affect the internal audit department that are relevant, that's what we must be proficient in. See, if you remember that tax, finance, and commercial law are in the appreciation level of audit proficiency, then you understand that it has to be something else. <coughs> the internal audit department collectively must possess or obtain certain competencies. Contract law at appreciation level. Management principles. They are at, uh, I believe, at, uh, at knowledge level. Marketing, last appreciation level. Okay, so then what could it be? Competency mean proficiency. We did three things in proficiency. Standards, procedures and techniques. And immediate to this is the next level, knowledge level, and in that we have information technology controls and use of IT in, audit, in the audit techniques. So that closely matching Close to proficiency is B, so B it is. The internal audit activity collectively must possess or obtain certain competencies, excluding knowledge of, I, of the IPPF, clearly it is needed, the International Professional Practice Framework, that is a must. Knowledge of cost accounting concepts. Again, uh, not the proficiency, but it is included, in accounting is included in your appreciation level 4. The ability to assess the relevant basic macroeconomics factors, that's again included in your appreciation stage. But the ability to conduct training session, mind the word, this training session is not anywhere, and that's why that's excluded. Internal order must possess the knowledge, skills, and other competencies essential to perform to the performance of their individual responsibilities. Consequently, all internal auditors should be competent with regard to what? With regard, all internal auditors. Operating within the organization's framework for governance, risk management and control. This is uh, not written anywhere, but if you use your hunch that this is applicable to all auditors, for every auditor within the internal audit department. Evaluating investment and security is not mentioned anywhere. Applying management and principles to the operational level, and we don't need to be operational expert. Performing structured system analysis, we're not IT experts, not needed to be. But this is so generic and, and makes sense that that should be the right answer. You, you use your intuitions, your guts in responding to the question like these. Question number 10. What is the most appropriate preventive measure for staff communication problems with, with engagement clients? Preventive measure for staff communication. Meet with the engagement clients to resolve communication problems. You have, it's not preventive, it is, it is detective or corrective. You have to prevent staff communication problems before occurring. Discuss communication problem with the staff auditors. Discussion will not help prevent the problems. Avoid unnecessary communication with engagement clients. That's not a solution. Provide staff with sufficient training to enhance communication skills so that the problem is solved right at the start. This is called a preventive control. The chief audit executive <coughs> is setting up a team to perform an assurance engagement on the organization's information system security structure. The organization has offices all over the world that rely on the system. The audit team will assess risks monitor implementation of corrective actions and evaluate controls. Which question does not require an answer when selecting the team to conduct this audit engagement for proficiency? So which of these questions should not be included? I would ask my team what type of skills are needed on the engagement. That's a, need, that's a question that I should ask to assess the skills. C. Which auditors have the skills and exper experience to work on this audit? That's a relevant question to ask. Are specialty skills from outside the internal audit department required? Required, bilkul, absolutely the right question to ask. But how many hours are needed to complete the engagement? That for the engagement itself, but not to assess the proficiency of the auditors. That's why 
is the right answer and that's how we end the subunit.